This is Just Tool Basics, and today we're talking about precision straight edges. Hello everyone, welcome to Just Tool Basics. Today's topic is precision straight edges, and in a previous video, you saw me adjust a edge joiner using a torpedo level. And the reason I use that, I use this guy. The reason I use that is because I figured this is a much more common thing, and for that particular task, this level of precision is plenty good. But if you're talking about something where thousands of an inch matters, this is the tool that you would need for that. So commonly used in automotive applications to measure cylinder head flatness or flywheel flatness or uh, whatever else kind of flatness you want to measure. Because while something can be flat, this tells you how flat that flat is. Uh, this tool is guaranteed to be within one thousandth of an inch or one thou and the way that that's accomplished is it takes this bar and then the manufacturer uh, grinds this one edge and this is the protector so we make sure that we don't hurt that edge when it is not in use so you can see it is shiny as it has been machined and polished uh, to be very very flat now while I mentioned that it has uh, some application in automotive, there's also plenty of application in woodworking. You know, if you have this around and you want to use it to measure your tool setup, there's no reason not to if you have it on hand. But uh, like I said, it is a little bit heavy. You don't want to potentially damage that edge. I mean, this a little nick or whatever does ruin the precision of it because, you know, that a gouge in it or whatever causes deformation of the metal, which means that now you don't have a flat spot and then you got to deal with getting it flattened again, which is a pain. So not to say you want to avoid using the tool, but like unnecessarily like, well, when this is good enough, it doesn't really matter if you hurt this guy. Um, that said, it's not like this is a very expensive tool. I mean, it's under $35, I think, uh, at least as of recording this, but, uh, I mentioned some use for woodworking. One second. For example, let's say you had a uh, joiner plane like this, and you wanted to see how flat the sole was. So first thing you'd want to do is pop the cap off and take out your iron. So while I I know that I haven't uh, I haven't set this one up entirely, and the the plate iron is retracted out of the mouth, still a good habit to not make assumptions about that. Um, and I'm going to use this little bullet as a prop so that we're not along the very, very edge. And what this can tell us is the flatness from end to end of this joiner plane. Now, one thing you don't want to do is like pinch along the way because if you have a high spot in the center, you're just rocking the, the, oh, look, it is high in the center. <laughs> there we go. Um, so, <laughs> uh, high, high side in the center, you don't want to like move your squeezing, uh, squeezing it once and, and, you know, maintaining pressure or squeezing at one side, uh, ensuring it's as flat as it can be is proper. Um, because if you're rocking it over that center high point, then you're not getting a true measurement. Uh, and the way we determine what that gap is on either side. So if I, if I squeeze it down on this side, the gap will obviously be over here. Uh, we use feeler gauges, which uh, I talk about in another video, uh, which I'll link below. Uh, and that video goes into much more detail. Uh, the way feeler gauges work is, just quickly, uh, each one is a specific thickness, which is marked on it. And, you know, we're talking r relatively narrow. I mean, I don't think you can see, like, the blue of the mat through there. But So we'll start at, say, 10 thousandths and we'll go thinner from there. So, and once we, uh, once I find what the gap is, uh, I'll zoom in so you can see better and, uh, and try and show it a little more up close. But what we're doing is we're taking this, taking the feeler that uh, we're wanting to test. This one is 10 thousandths of an inch. And, uh, and we're just trying to insert it flat against uh, the thing we're testing a little bit down and seeing if it if it slides in between the straight edge and the object 
well, 10 thousandths is obviously way too big, so let's drop down a few. We'll try 7 thousandths. Oh, yeah, that goes in there just fine. What about 8? We'll go back up. Nope. Oh, seven was a really good guess. If uh, if I jam it in there, eight will will get caught. But that's just because you know leverage. Um, seven seems to be the magic uh, the magic number. Let me find that again. There we go. Yeah. So right at the tail here. Seven thousandths of an inch, and then that's about it. Uh, so let me zoom in, and we'll see if we can see this better. That's that's how you test it. It is moving just just a hair. Yeah, I think it actually is a little bit narrower than seven thousandths, but, um, but anyway, that gives you uh, at least a, a ballpark for this. Um, yeah, it's at least so six is is, you know, almost you can do it almost silently. Oh, I have a hole in my glove. But yeah, now we know how flat that is. It's off by about six thousandths of an inch over its length, and this is uh, about a 22 inch joiner plane, which can be flattened out, uh, but it's a bit of a pain in the butt, since, of course, you need to take out all the other metal to get to that, but this is iron, so it'll come down pretty quickly. So yeah, that is how you use a precision straight edge to determine how flat flat is. Until next time, this is Just Tool Basics.